All right, mate. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, not bad. Can't complain. Like I just said to you, I've uh, got a few days off now. Um, over on Jeju, my first time here, so um, enjoying it so far. Lovely weather. Um, I don't know if that's normal for this time of year in Korea, but uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. It. Uh, the, the spring seasons and fall seasons are the, are the best time, Mike. As I'm sure you've already experienced it in the summer, it's a bit, it's a bit humid. Oh, mate, un- unbearable at times. Yeah. I tell you, like, oh, coming from from Perth, and obviously it's hot, and we play in the um, in the summer over in Australia. You can climatize and you get used to the dry heat, and I don't mind it to be fair. But this this summer in Korea is something on another level. It's and the mugginess, and you step outside and you're wet through. It's oh yeah, it's uh, it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> But um, from a, a team's point of view, how would you say the season's gone so far? Um, I, th- I think probably not not as good as what we would have liked and what we would have hoped, if I'm honest. Um, I think the, the start we had was promising. Um, and we definitely showed glimpses over the course of the season. But just unfortunately, we've just not been able to maintain the consistent levels of teams above and it's it's probably killed us um, in a sense in regards to our position on the league. I think we've we've let ourselves down in a few games, um, and everyone can everyone in the squad could probably hold the hand up and say, you know, at some point here or there they've they've made a mistake or whatever. And as footballers do, everyone makes mistakes, but we've not sometimes been always been able to bounce back from those mistakes well. Um, and you've seen over the last month we we lost four in the bounce before uh, the Guangzhou game and. It, and it was great character from the lads to turn that game around at the weekend. Um, so I, th- I think that's been probably the, the most disappointing thing is the fact that we haven't been able to maintain um, that consistency. But there's definitely been promising signs and and good good areas of the season which we can look back on and be be proud of. Obviously, these these games that come to mind, ones that I played, and obviously the John Buck away was a good win. Um, and there's been a few more as well, especially at the start of the season. I think. The, the boys got grounded out some really good results um, and played really well. And we've had injuries and I'm not using that as an excuse, but the, the squad has probably chopped and changed a bit more than what we would have liked. Um, and that's probably been a contributing factor as well um, as to where we are in the league. But one thing I've noticed in, in Korea um, since I've been here is, is the fact that it, it, also, it always feels as though any team can beat anyone on the day um, it all depends on who shows up um, I think the, the playing styles of the majority of the teams are all pretty similar I think yeah just going going to that going into a game with the right mentality and the right attitude and the desire to hunger to win uh, definitely is a, a real key factor I think in winning in the K-League for sure yeah oh, for sure it can be a very hard league to uh, predict results and scores and that because like you said it just depends on which team it is that turns upon the day yeah yeah definitely and that's how it feels sometimes as well and I go back to that the game against uh, Jeju the other week when we got beat 4-2 at home and um, it was probably a real low point for us in the season um, and I think turning up that day everyone obviously felt confident we all everyone wants to win and but you, you kind of got that sense within the first five minutes that ah, this might not be our day. And, and when that mentality kind of spreads throughout the group, then it can be very hard to pull back. But going back a week before, we were away in Japan playing in the Champions League and the resilience that the team showed there and the, and the character was unbelievable. And to, to get a result there and get us through to the next round of the Champions League was immense. So it just shows you, like I said, that it can just just be a case of turning up on the day and, and getting the result. Yeah. For you personally, obviously, I like like you said, you're a bit unlucky with injuries in your first game and that then you obviously now you're back in the team, you are a regular. Was that a bit of a relief to know that after that time out that you were able to sort of work your way back into the team? Um, yeah, I think so. I think when I first came to Korea, I had a month. Obviously, I had to quarantine when I first arrived and I had a month or so with the team. We went down to Changwon for 10 days. Um, and then I finally got back to Pohang with the group and I felt confident and felt fit going into the season and was really looking forward to it, as you, as you obviously are. And it was such a shame for me to to break down in the first game like I did. 
Um, and we weren't anticip anticipating it to be as a lengthy um, stay out on the sidelines, but unfortunately that was the case. And uh, to get back for the Champions League was kind of my goal uh, towards towards the end of my, my rehab. I think we obviously kept had to keep pushing it back the, uh, when I come back to, to playing. And I think I had my eyes set on the Champions League and the club, the, the manager, everyone was good with me. And... Um, wanting me to get back to the Champions League and they were good with me over there and we had a lot of games in, in a short schedule so the minutes I got were really good to be fair and they didn't just throw me in and play me 90 minutes every, every game because I more, more than likely broke down again so it was good that they managed it well in that respect um, and yeah and since I've been back I, I feel like I've been playing well and obviously the results like I said haven't been the greatest over the last month or so but we, we have picked up some important wins Um and like I said, the team on the day can turn up and play brilliant football. And I think one thing that we have shown, uh, Pohang especially, is the resilience and how we've been hard to beat over the course of the season. I think teams find it very hard to break us down. We've defended really well. Um, before the last few weeks, we probably had the best defence um, on the table-wise uh, in the league. So with regards to Leeds conceded, um, so that, that's been definitely a positive aspect. Um, yeah, I, th I think obviously the one area that we need to look at is, is creating more chances and scoring more goals to, to push us up that table. Yeah, well, like you said, is the ACL coming up again quite soon. Obviously, you made your way out of the group. It was, was Paul Hang's first appearance in the competition since 2016, so a bit of a, a long-awaited return. Obviously, now you're into the quarterfinals. Is that probably the minimum that you expected as a, a team to make it this far? Um, I, I think the way the the Champions League, uh, the way the games were scheduled, and I think the qualifying rules this season have been slightly different. Is that right compared to last seasons, where the even if you finish second, it wasn't a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah th there's one extra group now, so it's all about best placed second teams and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. So, so we're, I don't think especially as foreigners, we weren't probably aware of that going into the tournament. And it was one of those things we kind of found out last minute whilst <laughs> we were there, which is generally the case. Um, but that was that was one thing that was probably going against us because I, I felt we did have a tough group, really. We had obviously Johor, the Malaysian champions, who, you know, were a very good team. And Nagoya, uh, they've obviously proven over the years how, how strong they are. And they probably were the best team in the group and deservedly so. Um, and even Ratchaburi really were no mugs and they uh, they fought out a, a tough nil-nil draw against us late in the group as well. So, I mean, we were always optimistic about getting through the group. Um, but like I said, I think when you compare the, the other groups, uh, we definitely had uh, one of the toughest ones and especially with the Aussie teams dropping out and a couple of the Chinese teams as well. Um it, it made it easier for some of the other teams in the other group. But we were solely focused on the job at hand that we had. And I think we, we did well over there. We played really well. And that 1-1 one, one draw against Nagoya in the last group. So that was a really uh, important result. And, and here we are, like you said, in the quarters. Yeah, it can't be easy as well going over to, over to play, the, play against Nagoya in Japan. Um, but you obviously you've you've got them again now in the in, in the quarterfinals. What are your thoughts on that draw? Are you uh, happy to avoid playing another K League team, or you know you play a team that you've already played this season? You know what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, that kind of thing. Yeah, you could say so. I think we've definitely probably got the hardest fixture. I think both San and John Book and they're familiar with each other as, as we are with them as well. But um, I guess we're lucky in that respect that we've got we played Nagoya already a couple of times, so we kind of know their style of play. We know how strong they are. But, you know, like I said, if we turn up on the day, there's no no reason why we can't get a result and get through. And it's a, a one-off game, um, which, you know, can work to our advantage in a stadium that we're sort of familiar with, whereas Nagoya might not necessarily be. So, uh, you know, I'm confident that we can get a win. Um, I'm happy that we don't have to go to Japan, if I'm honest with you, <laughs> because I, I don't think I could do another two weeks of uh, quarantine <laughs> or isolation or whatever it is. So they've kind of done us a favour, the AFC, in that regard. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the boys are, are looking forward to it. And now we've got a good 10 days or so before the, 
before the game to prepare. Um, that's going to be really important. Like you said, yeah. So, it, so you, the fact that it is, it's not a home game, but it's in South Korea. That is an advantage, then, isn't it? You know, they they have to come all the way over over here. It's going. To, it's not going to be easy for them, is it? No, I mean it's only an hour flight. It's not. The, it's not. The first. It's not. But yeah, there's a lot of traveling yeah, involved. You know, you, to travel, but... you can't fly to uh, Jonju and that kind of thing. It's, it's not as if you can sort yeah. of fly straight there and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely that familiarity and um, probably the annoyance of, of having to travel, get on a bus, get on a plane, get on another bus in a hotel, you know, all those things that contribute to um, an, away, an away day Yeah. In, in Asia. So... I mean, it's something that I was used to playing in the A League with we had it every every other week. So, oh, fair um, enough, yeah. maybe I don't mind doing it. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, the game's also been played over one leg and not two. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, well, like I said, I mean, with that being the case, it's almost like a final. Yeah. Um, you know, so whoever turns up on the day and and goes for it, it's like when we played um, Osaka the other week, we, we would definitely, you could tell in the first 10 minutes that we wanted it more and that we were going to get the result. Um, and so we have to set the tone from the off, I think, uh, straight away. Yeah, obviously you mentioned it just before that obviously you want to sort of try and get more wins in the league and work way back up the league table because obviously you want to try and qualify for Champions League next year. Is that is it kind of ironic that, that sort of you are looking towards qualifying for next year, but you have... The ACL this year is a little bit not not as a distraction, but you know it's it's kind of balancing two things at at once. It, it is in a sense, I guess. I mean, the the schedule this season has been you know an anomaly and has been hectic, um, and the the breaks that we've had is, uh, and then backed up with busy schedules has been crazy. You know, um, so it's been very demanding. Uh, on the players physically and mentally, you know, because of the travel as well. I think, uh, especially this period, is is one of the toughest to be professional footballer. If, if not, you know, anyone, um, you know, everyone's struggling all over the world. But yeah, it's um, it's definitely hard when you're traveling and going overseas, playing in the Champions League away from family, especially as a foreigner as well. When really you don't have anyone, and you know, my wife and my son are stuck stuck in Pohang, and you know, they don't have many friends here, so. It's it's definitely it's all those things that kind of contribute to it, to making it a lot a lot tougher than what it generally is or has been yeah. in the past. Um, and like you said, we want to finish as high as we can in the league, so that's another important thing. And um, we've got one game really, um, another final, I guess, against Injun now, where we need to to win that and hope that results results go our way as well, so that we break into the top six. So yeah, I'm a bit disappointed in the fact that we kind of rely on other on other teams because. Um, you know, you always want to go out there and, and win and, and know that by doing so, we'll get you in the best best possible position in the league. But unfortunately, we, um, we're not in that um, position and we don't have that luxury hand. So we get in the top six and then we know, um, as we've shown over the course of the season, we can beat some of the teams that we've played in those top six positions and, and push higher up the table. Yeah, I just want to ask you a little bit about the, the perception of the Champions League in Australia. Because obviously you, you're involved in the ACL with Perth Glory. Is it seen as as a, a less important competition for A League teams? Do you think? I don't know. Um, it's a massive competition. When when we won the um, the Premier's Plate with Perth and we broke into the Champions League, it was obviously their first time that they've been in a competition, and um, it's regarded as the biggest competition domestically in in Asia, and in, is highly regarded in Australia. So all the teams want to get into those positions. Is always. It always chops and changes the rules as to how you can qualify. And I know I think they've lost half a spot or a spot over the last three or four years or so. And that's probably because of the the way Australian teams have performed um, over there. But I mean, in Australia, you do have the disadvantage of the travel um, and backing it up with a busy schedule. You could be playing in Perth or wherever in Australia and then having to fly straight from that game to an Asian country, say China or Japan or even Korea for that matter, um, and then flying directly to an away game back in Australia. So the amount of miles and Ks you, you're racking up over the course of the, the period you're in the competition is, you know, it's crazy, but that's obviously what you um, what you have to deal with when, you, when you're playing in a, 
in a competition in a continent that's so big. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I think the fact that the Aussie team dropped out, I don't know for sure, but obviously it's because of the uh, logistics of quarantining and because of the quarantine matters and whatnot in Australia are so strict. Um, I think logistically it's just impossible for the teams to take part in a competition and then um, obviously they've got their league duties as well to consider, which probably are more important um, for, the, for the Australian game than, than competing in uh, the Champions League at this moment in time. Yeah. Well, I want to talk about, uh, obviously you've scored a few goals as well recently, uh, two in quite quick succession. Is that something that the Marlins are wanting to try and make advantage of? Obviously your kind of physical physical presence in the box and stuff? Not, no, not, not particularly, no. I think um, I probably could have had a couple more um, going back to the Champions League and I missed an absolute sitter against Ratchaburi when we drew nil-nil. Scared it over the bar from probably five yards out. Um, and then I've had a couple of half chances back in the league since I've been back playing. So I always feel like I'm a threat. Um, and like you said, I've got that physicality in the box and whatnot over the pitch. So it's uh, it's something that I definitely, I still think I need to work on and, and improve. The two headers that I've got have been good, um, good goals to be fair, but the results haven't gone our way in either of those games. So you don't really, you take too much from it. Yeah, it's always good to get on the score sheet, but it really only matters if you win, doesn't it? So it, it was a bit disappointing in that regard that my first goal in the K-League was uh, a loss against, in a loss against all Sam, uh, a dark. Which would have been nice to have got the winner, but yeah, it's something I need to keep working on. Um, I, I kind of it's funny. I'm telling my dad about it. I was watching the watching the Prem and just watching um, was it Thiago Silva when he scored the other week. I can't remember it was against. Um, and uh, I was just watching his movement, and then uh, I because I, in the past I've always bolted into the box, and you know try to give everything and I thought oh well maybe tomorrow I'll just take it easy um, just watch the fly of the ball watch it come in and then react off the ball rather than me going too soon and uh, and trying to trying to score a world but yeah it worked um, so yeah so my, you know I'm always looking at um, always looking to change change up what I do my style and um, it's always good like I said to get on the get on the end of one yeah, well, hopefully there's more goals to come and goals in wins for Pohang as well. So, mate, thank you very much for your time. Um, good luck against Nagoya and, of course, good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Cheers. See you later.